What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, as always, I'm joined by Shan Times. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Welcome to Wednesday's episode. Uh, so for those who are new to the podcast, Monday and Tuesday are topics, so definitely check out uh, this week's. So uh, going backwards, on Tuesday, we talked about uh, compensation for uh, CEOs and how that'll be tied to their uh, cyber practices. So there'll be consequences uh, for bad cyber hygiene and things of that nature. Then on Monday, what do we discuss on Monday? Uh, with the five families. The, so the, there's five ransomware gangs that have combined forces to become Voltron <laughs> out there and just uh, our stance on it and how they publicly advertise themselves uh, and their, and their uh, I guess, their first heist <laughs> within their syndicate. So definitely check that out on Monday's episode. Uh, and then on Thursday, we'll probably do a throwback Thursday. We'll do a, an older episode. Uh, because I kind of like that format. And then Friday is everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So without further ado, I give it to Shannon. First off, I want to say I love the Voltron reference. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and because it came out again on Netflix, like even the younger crowd kind of knows it, right? Like, right, right. <laughs> when, you, when you say it, I think of the old Voltron, but you know, but that's a Friday discussion, but on, on, on to what we're here for, right? So this article is from IT World Canada. Um, and it's from Howard Solomon, and it's entitled International Women in Cyber Day, Slow Progress, right? So what it's talking about, um, not necessarily across the world, but this is in Canada specifically, right? So they're talking about the prospects for women in cybersecurity um, and, and how promising it is in other countries. And I know here in America, we've gotten, uh, we've done a few articles on this where they're getting a little bit more serious about it and adding that diversity, right? But they talk about in Canada, um, there, there's there's limited change that they're showing right there, right? So um, they actually have uh, they actually have International Women in Cyber Day, which was one is was one September, I believe, is the date for that is is when it is. Um, but uh, in Canada, they have an event that's coming up September 29th, right? So uh, they actually you can register for it if you want to do it, right? So, but it's uh, at Vancouver's Simon Fraser University. But the thing with this is that. To me, this was a little surprising to me, right? Like I've always thought of Canada to be a little a little bit more progressive in these types of things, right? But uh, maybe not so much. Uh, and and in talking about you know the problems that they have, not the problems that they have, but like the issue with it, they actually reference a study from 2021, right? That was a best practices guide for attracting and retaining women in cybersecurity teams. And when you look at this, like some of the stuff they 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 mention in here, um, I don't know. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to demonstrate. Or, or to put actions to it, right? So one of the things they mentioned is understand the problem. Like, well, we understand the problem, right? Or, or at least I guess we think we do. Um, but how, what's quantifiable? What, what do you have that you can put to that to show that you understand the problem, right? Um, learn to communicate cybersecurity. Uh, use gender sensitive language, which, okay, that's an easy one, right? Like when you put out job postings or, or you're, you're talking or, or whatever, um, be specific, right? Don't always don't always say he, you know what I mean? Things of that nature, right? Um, ensure women visibility. Um, that's another one that can be done, right? Like put put the women out front to show that you actually have that diversity, right? Because some of the stuff they mentioned um in here, it's only 20%, I, I believe it was 20% of the cybersecurity workforce is is female, right? When they make up a little, I believe it's still a little more than half of the population in the world, right? Like that's that's vastly, vastly skewed. Um to where we can do better than that. But they, they, they talk, again, this is talked about in Canada, right? So Canada is the ones that's having the issues with this, but there's just different things that they need to do to get on top of it. But uh, they have top women in cybersecurity events that they advertise and things of that nature and how they talk about not necessarily coming from STEM backgrounds, but STEAM backgrounds. So STEAM is, is STEM with arts in the title. That's what the A is, right? Um, so um, just doing different things to try to, try to uh, uh, attract more women to the uh, to the field, right? And so even in this guide they reference, there's a mentorship guide, right? It talks about different steps you could take. So self-knowledge, connect, explore, create, persist. So like I see these and it just seems kind of buzzwordy, right? Like what are the actions? I'd like to see more of the actions that can be taken to kind of kind of make this more of a reality, right? And this doesn't, and, and, and in this instance, we're talking about women, but this is the same discussion we have when it talks about, when we talk about people of color as well, right? Like don't just put the buzzwords out there. Like what are you doing? What money are you investing, right? And, and like I mentioned before, here in the States, we're doing a lot better 
job of it lately um, when it comes to women and also for people of color, right? Like Microsoft and Google have put their money where their mouth is, you know what I mean? Actually putting billions into different communities that are uh, that that are uh, majority black or, or Hispanic, you know what I mean? So um, it, this is, again, I thought Canada was a little bit more progressive than this to where they wouldn't have this problem. Like they'd be ahead of us in, in, in certain things like this, just like with the EU, right? Like there's articles we do with the EU where it's just like, man, yeah, we definitely should be on that level, right? But um, I, I'd like to see, again, more actionable things that can be done and not just the buzzwords. But uh, Ryan, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, make sure that you're, you're like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit a bell if there's a bell. Uh, I don't have a good segue for this, but please send people our way in our direction for uh, the, the podcast. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, we always do these articles when we don't have a, a woman on the panel. I'm just like, man, every single time. <laughs> I was like, we missed the mark every single time. But uh, no, I think it's a good discussion to, to have. And I, I like... Uh, that this one is focused on Canada because when, whenever I think of the demographics of Canada, it's it's pretty much like America's cousin, right? Uh, except for uh, in better shape and uh, better mental health. <laughs> so, to be honest with you, like when usually when they do studies and uh, uh, adjacent to America, they look at their the Canada's health, like their their uh, their uh, in integration, their. Uh, uh, biases there like because it's so similar to america but it's not america right uh, i'm from buffalo uh, uh so i used to go across the rainbow bridge back uh back in the day when you didn't need a even need a passport you just went to canada on a friday or got kicked out of canada on a friday <laughs> whichever one happened to you whatever your experience right um but with that being said uh it's interesting to see that I, i'm not i don't necessarily believe that we're ahead of them we, we're just we we have better strives going right now. I think the 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 uh, percentages are very similar because uh, again, how does ha over half the population uh, not have a, a demographic over twenty percent? Right, that doesn't even make sense. Like you make a fifty one percent of the population, but only twenty percent of of, uh, of those in cyber are are female. And I think it it not only is an issue with the pipeline and being STEM is kind of what or STEAM is what they they um, they talk about in the article, but also retention so like in the states you see a lot of women are leaving cybersecurity because of uh it's it's very male heavy uh it's it's uh it's it's very um uh uh not i'm trying to trying to watch my 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 words it's not that it's aggressive career field it's that uh men are just jerks <laughs> you know what I mean? to a certain extent i can't think of a better way of saying more, it more ultra competitive yeah the, but uh, and it, it draws a lot of those type of people it's just the same thing with it right so like uh it, it, oh, those those who work for engineers know it's it's hard to work with engineers right even if you're an engineer yourself <laughs> Cybersecurity has a lot of that as well within it where it's just like why why are we why are we behaving or, or or interacting with each other in this manner, right? As opposed to just getting the job done. Um, and I, I think a, a lot of people just don't want to put up with that. Uh, like when we're just like, I'll just go do something else. Like, because I don't feel welcomed uh, within this this community. So I, I would assume it'd be the same thing uh, there in Canada as well, where you have a retention issue because of that. Um, not to mention there's other demographics, but like when women decide to have their careers and when they decide to have families, things of that nature, they're all impactful. But I would think that that part would be better in Canada because of their progressiveness towards uh, uh, maternity leave, paternity leave, vacationing, things of that nature are just leaps and bounds better than America's. Uh, not not to, to poo-poo uh, uh, our, our, our motherland, so to speak, right? Like America is great, but when it comes to uh, those type of benefits, everyone else is doing it better just saying <laughs> like just the way it is we're making strives there are certain large tr trillion dollar companies that are, are progressing that but for the most part we just don't do a good job when it comes to uh people their mental health vacationing time off things of that nature uh all all of which things may be uh uh retention setters for women in the field because they do uh have roles where they want to start families take care of their families things of that nature 
and they may not want to deal with the the nonsense or the BS that comes with this field uh, in relation to that, right? It, it, it is counter counterintuitive, counterproductive. Uh, so, like for that to also be a problem in Canada kind of makes me believe that it's, it's bigger than just an American thing. Well, I know it's bigger than just an American thing, but it makes me think that with with a population set that's so similar to our own. Uh, and has better mental health and better health care provisions, at least on paper. Like, why is that still an issue there? That like, has to be, it has, has to run deeper, has to be more systemic than than my belief. Mm, I ain't in church right now, but you preach. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there's definitely an issue. Like, not only do you need to target, uh, uh, like, because my, my whole thing is like people, like it seems to be the people on the hiring side seem to want to wait for these people to find you as opposed to you going to find them. So there has to be more strives to finding women in STEM or STEAM to to uh, to capture them. And then what are you doing to retain them? Uh, I think is the, the bigger issue because they're going to have different needs than men in the field, right? So like, what are you doing? Like, it can't be just a blanket thing. Like when you're targeting different demographics, whether it be... Uh, on gender basis or on a racial basis like you have to to not only target them to get them into the pipeline but then you have to find what cultural sensitivities or things of that nature that you have to do to keep and retain them and i know everybody just wants to say everybody's equal and we should do the same things but it's just not the not the case like there has to be steps made in order to to retain different demographics and it's just it's not uh, the same across the board like everybody doesn't have the same uh belief systems or or needs as everyone else bar none man you like jay-z on the black album <laughs> <What more can't laughs> <I say? laughs> you, you <laughs> we'll see what happens when i no longer exist you're saying. right <laughs> Man, that so was that was, we'll that was on point, man. Like I, I can add nothing to that. Like, <laughs> I, no, seriously, man. Like that was that was very good, very good. Well, hopefully, hopefully it recorded well because I didn't I didn't practice any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully it turns out well. But next time we do this, I have to make sure I have someone ready to jump on the the podcast with, with us. But uh, but the problem is that everybody we know had they're, they're all busy, right? Your 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 Chelsea Pierre's, your Aisha Hollins. Like I hate to call people like last minute calling that favor, but hey, we got this article. I definitely want to set you up for it. Uh, so maybe we hold this the material until we can get them on. But it, I, I definitely want to do this this one because of September 1st being International uh, uh, Women in Cyber. So I was like, I can't hold this. I can't hold on to this for a month. <laughs> then it's, it's old news, right? But I, I think we should m make it an effort to definitely get uh, a, a woman on the panel when we, when we discuss these things. Because I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff. <laughs> that would have been better said by somebody who's actually within the demographic. So, but definitely continue to tune in throughout the week, right? So Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesdays, uh, this was Wednesday, so our discussion. Uh, Thursdays, Thursdays uh, will typically be Ask a CSP. I have two more in the pipe coming down, but they'll probably be later in September, early October. So uh, I think we'll start doing Throwback Thursdays, where we we do an old episode that's one of our favorites or or something that we want to. Uh, bring more visibility to and then friday's everything else so definitely tune in for that one movies books games all that good stuff so hit us up by the website it's like go by our name uh you can also hit me up personally i'm at ry ry security guy that's r y r y security guy i'm on uh linkedin clubhouse twitter and threads stay safe stay secure <laughs>